Welcome again, everybody, to ISO Sports. The Warriors dynasty is over, and it's all Draymond Green's fault. But even more so, it costs the legacy of Stephen Curry. Brock Purdy is the MVP. Fresh off the back of a 45-29 drubbing of the Cardinals, along with a stat line of four touchdowns and no turnovers, it looks like Mr. Irrelevant is really in the lead in the MVP race. Jake Paul won a fight against somebody we didn't know in a fight we didn't know about for reasons that nobody knows or gives a fuck about. This is the part of the show where I give my takes on the sports world from the podcast couch. Let's get into it. The Warriors dynasty is over. And it's all Draymond Green's fault. Yes, Clay has lost a few steps. But Steph Curry is still playing like a top five player in the league. We know the Warriors dynasty was built on the three ball and the, sh uh, the shot making and the shooting from not only Steph and Curry, but from Clay Thompson and to a lesser extent, KD. But it was also built on having the best defense in the league. And Draymond Green was the catalyst for that. Great defender, good pastor, solid rebounder for his size, came through in clutch situations in the playoffs. And through all that, he's cost the Warriors so much during his tenure as one of their best players. Whether it be getting suspended during the 2016 finals, disrespecting Kevin Durant on live TV, and ultimately being part of the reason why he left Golden State, knocking out Jordan Poole, which disrupted his team's chemistry and ultimately caused him to be traded from the team for a guy in CP3 who is really on his last legs in the NBA. Just in the last nine months, he stomped on Sabonis' chest in a playoff game, put Rudy Gobert in a chokehold, and full-on swung and slapped Yusuf Nurkic in the face, resulting in him being suspended six games for the first two offenses and now being suspended indefinitely for hitting Yusuf Nurkic. And all this has cost the Warriors so much, but even more so, it costs the legacy of Stephen Curry. What if they win in 2016, completing the perfect season and cementing their names in the history book? What if KD is convinced to stay in Golden State? The dynasty continues with the reloaded Warriors team with Steph and KD still near their primes. What if Jordan Poole isn't traded for an OTP and with the guidance of Steph and Clay, maybe becomes a legit star and an important piece for another championship run? Maybe there is no argument between him and Magic as best point guard of all time. Maybe he has a legitimate argument to be the GOAT. More opportunities to win championships. More opportunities to play with better talent. But the guy who's supposed to be his enforcer, the guy who's supposed to be a leader on this Warriors dynasty, the guy who's supposed to be his second best player is hell bent on destroying his chances at greatness every chance he gets. And as this Warriors team gets older, unless they make a move, perhaps we really have seen truly the end of the Warriors dynasty. Brock Purdy is the MVP. Fresh off the back of a 45-29 drubbing of the Cardinals, along with a stat line of four touchdowns and no turnovers, it looks like Mr. Irrelevant is really in the lead in the MVP race. And I get it. He has a stacked squad, and it doesn't look as pretty as Patrick Mahomes, but he's leading the league in touchdown passes and in QBR. He's second in completion percentage and in yards. And I get it. He has C-Mac, he has Debo, he has Brandon Ayuk, he has George Kittle, and they've been balling. And, and of course, you can't forget about Trent Williams, that big boy protecting the quarterback and, and helping to get the run started. Yes, but the ball placement, the timing with his receivers, the calmness in the pockets, along with the numbers, I mean, it makes it really clear. Brock Purdy is the MVP, guys, especially after... Dak falls flat on his face against the Bills. Lamar doesn't have the numbers statistically. Mahomes has had a down season with all the drops from his receivers. So let's stop the, the Brock Purdy hate. This guy is unbelievable. And the story of going from the last pick in the draft, mystery irrelevant, to being an MVP in two years, 
is truly special and it deserves to be christened with the MVP. And last, and certainly, certainly least, Jake Paul won a fight against somebody we didn't know in a fight we didn't know about for reasons that nobody knows or gives a fuck about. Now, I'll be honest. I'm talking about this because my boy Blake Still is a huge fan. So this is for you, bud. Was the knockout real? Maybe. Who knows? I don't care. You know what people do care about? You know what is really interesting? His little brother, Logan. On TV with the biggest pro wrestling company in the world, with the United States title on his shoulder, looking like the best and most successful celebrity to pro wrestler of all time. I did not see that coming a few years ago. But hey, as Mr. Still would say, go team Jake. This has been ISO Sports.